So we've been studying for the TSI for a minute now. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to look in this video's description box. I want you to click on the link that has these five questions. It's a practice test that's for free. I want you guys to give yourselves at least 10 minutes to go ahead and do that practice test, then come back and watch this video. If you're looking at me like, you know, you're not about to do that, then it's fine. Just go ahead and you can watch me um, solve each one of these problems. But it would be a nice way for you to gauge to see how you're doing with your practice study. So those are the two options. Practice, try to do these problems before you watch the video or just watch me solve as I go. All right. So now you're back. So let's go ahead and do problem number one. It says Michael bought two drinks and three sandwiches for $13.50. Tony bought five drinks and six sandwiches for $30. If Rachel buys two drinks and two sandwiches, how much will it cost her? Okay, so we're talking about drinks and sandwiches. So I like to make a little box in the corner just to represent the information that I'm trying to find. So D for drinks, S for sandwiches. So Michael bought two drinks and three sandwiches. So I'm going to write 2D to represent 2 times D, which is two drinks, and which represents plus three sandwiches. So 3S for 1350. So the total is equal to 1350. Tony bought five drinks and six sandwiches. So five drinks plus six sandwiches and her total was $30. Okay, so I see that I have two equations and each of those equations have two variables. I practice these types of problems in my other practice tests, so I know what I have to do. I'm gonna solve this system of equations through elimination. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna see, can I eliminate the Ds or can I eliminate the Ss? So I know that if I multiply this entire thing by negative 2, this 3s will become negative 6s, and I'll be able to eliminate them. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to multiply that entire first equation by negative 2. So I'm going to do 2d plus 3s is equal to 1350, and I'm going to multiply that entire line by negative 2. So it's going to be negative 4d minus 6s equals, and I'm going to do 1350 times 2, which would be negative 27. Okay, and then I'm going to bring down the second equation. It's going to be 5d plus 6s equals 30. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to combine those two equations. So negative 4d plus 5d is just d. These s's cancel each other out. Negative 27 plus 30 would be 3. So D is equal to 3 or $3. So each drink costs $3. So I'm going to go ahead and put that answer in my box. And now I'm going to go ahead and figure out how much the sandwiches cost. So if I go back to my first equation, it was 2D plus 3S is equal to 1350. I'm going to go ahead and put $3 in for D. So 2 times 3 plus 3S is equal to 1350. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 3S is equal to 1350. Then what I have to do is I have to subtract 6 from both sides. So 1350 minus 6 is equal to 750. We're going to divide both of those by 3. 3, divide each of them by 3, and S is equal to $2.50. So S is $2.50. So now I know how much drinks cost and how much sandwiches cost. So now the next question is, we have Rachel who's going to buy two drinks and two sandwiches, and we want to know how much it's going to cost her. So 2, we're going to put $3 in for drinks plus 2 times 250 for the sandwiches, and we're going to figure out how much that cost us. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 5, 
it's going to cost her a total of $11. The answer is going to be B. So did you guys get the answer for B? If you got B, then you did it correct. Great job. If you didn't get B and you need extra practice, just go ahead and see some of my other TSI test prep. You'll be able to see some more practice problems that are similar to this. Okay, question number two. It says, if on the XY plane, the slope of the line Y equals MX plus B, Y equals MX plus B, is more than the slope of the line Y is equal to negative X plus B, which of the following must be true about M? Okay, so this is the line that we're comparing it to. So just as a reminder, the number that's before the X, that is going to be the slope, and B is the y-intercept. You know that because that's something that we practice in our other videos. So there is an invisible one in front of the, that x. So the slope is negative one, and then the y-intercept, we don't have that information, but I just wanted you to be able to see. The slope is also the same as m. So m is equal to negative one in this equation. So they're asking us in this equation, if this m is greater than negative 1, which one of these choices is true? So if this m is greater than this m, it should be greater than negative 1. So our answer should be C. m is greater than negative 1. Again, if you're having any difficulties with these types of problems, then I'm going to go ahead and link my other practice problems in the description so that you guys can watch a video and refresh yourselves on these topics. All right, if you're doing great and you had both of those answers um, correct, well done. Let's go ahead and go to question number three. It says, a math class is made up of five 11th graders and seven 10th graders. If the 11th graders average 75% on their final exam and the 10th graders average 85% on their final exam, which was the average grade on the final exam for the entire class rounded to the nearest percentage? So if we learned anything from my previous videos is that we like to write everything down. And even if we're confused and we're not really sure what we're going to do, we're still just going to write everything down and we're going to hope that the way to solve it just comes to us while we're <laughs> writing everything down. So there's five 11th graders and then there's seven. 10th graders, okay? The 11th graders average 75% on their test. And then the 10th graders average 85% on their test. Okay, so we're trying to find the average grade for the entire class. So we're gonna have to put the average or the total of all the grades on the top. And then we're gonna, on the bottom, just have the total number of students, okay? So the total number of students would be five plus seven. So there's a total of 12 students. So the denominator is gonna be 12. And then we have to find the total of all their grades. So we can do 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75, and then 85 plus 85 plus 85 plus eight, seven times, or we could do it the simple way, which we learned in our previous video by doing 75 times five plus 85 times seven. So let's go ahead and use our calculators. 75 times five is equal to 375. 85 times seven is equal to 595 divided by 12. So we're gonna add those two numbers together and we get 970 divided by 12 and 970 divided by 12 is equal to 80.83. But they want us to round to the nearest percentage. So we're gonna erase this and we're gonna go ahead and round. So 80.83, we wanna round to the nearest percentage. So we're gonna look to the right. That is five or above. So we're gonna go ahead and round the zero to the next number one. So it would be 81%. We're going to go ahead and circle D. If you need extra practice rounding um, to the nearest whole number, then you can go ahead and see my AccuPlacer workbook 
arithmetic workbook, it practices simple steps for you to solve basic problems, basic arithmetic, decimals, rounding, things like that. Okay, so we're on to problem number four. Great job, you guys. So it says, what are the factors of the trinomial x squared plus 10x plus 16? We know that this is called a trinomial because it has three terms. So we're gonna go ahead and factor it. The way that we factor it is by changing this trinomial into two binomials. So we're gonna break down the x squared by saying x and x. And then we remember that we need to find two numbers that multiply to get that last number, 16, but that will add to get that middle number, which is 10. So what are two numbers that add to get 16? That add to get 10, I'm sorry, but multiply to get 16. So I would try eight and two. Eight times two is 16, eight plus two is 10. So when you factor, it would be x plus eight and x plus two. So our answer is going to be B. Just so you guys know, if you were to have put X plus two and X plus eight, this is the exact same answer. When you're multiplying, you can write things backwards or forwards. So if you do two times four, that's the same as saying four times two. So it doesn't matter which order you write this, as long as it's X plus eight in one of them and X plus two in the other. All right, so let's go ahead and go to question number five. So question number five says, which of the following is not equivalent to, sorry, and I added an extra V, which of the following is not equivalent to 2x minus 6 times x plus 2? So 2x minus 6, x plus 2. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this out. So I'm going to do 2x times x and then 2x times 2. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. Then I'm going to go ahead and multiply negative 6 times x and negative 6 times 2. So negative 6 times x is negative 6x, and negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. I want to combine like terms, 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. And now I have a trinomial that I can go ahead and factor. So what I notice is that two of these answers take out the number two from the trinomial. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can take out the number two from this. So it's gonna be two x squared minus two x minus 12. I'm gonna factor out the number two, which means I'm gonna divide each one of these by two. So two x squared divided by two is just x squared. Negative two x divided by two is negative x. And negative 12 divided by two is negative six. So this would be equivalent to this. So we already have one of our answers, which is C. C is yes, that is equivalent. So just so you remember, we're trying to find the one that's not equivalent. So it's not going to be C. C is equivalent. Okay, let's see if we can now break this down even further. So remember, when we're breaking down a trinomial, like we did in problem number four, we try to break it down into two binomials. So we're going to break down x squared by saying x and x. We're gonna find two numbers that multiply to get negative six, multiply to get negative six, but when you add them, they equal this middle number, which is invisible, negative one. So negative three times two and negative three plus two equals that out. So I'm gonna write negative three and plus two. So x minus three and x plus two. So then A is also equivalent. So then the only choice that we have left that wouldn't be equivalent is B. So B is going to be our answer. It's the only one that is not equivalent to our original 2x minus 6, x plus 2. All right, so out of the five questions that we did together, out of the five question practice tests that I just gave you guys, please let me know in the description box or actually, sorry, please let me know in the comment section how many you were able to get right. So if this is your first time taking practice tests for TSI, don't feel bad. But if you've been watching some of my other videos, please let me know if they've been helping you so that we can do some more practice together. All right, guys, thanks so much. See you in the next video.